Now, Republican lawmakers are working on their final drafts of their plan to cut trillions of dollars in taxes for the wealthy and, and gigantic multinational corporations. Now, there's a new provision aimed at getting the support of certain congressmen that have people a little bit pissed. Now, according to a report from David Sirota, the International Business Times, uh, it's an excellent report that doesn't seem to be getting a lot of traction in mainstream corporate media. Hmm, I wonder why. Um, according to this report, facing a firestorm of criticism, Republican Senator Bob Corker has sent a letter Sunday night to uh, Finance Committee Chairman Orrin Hatch, right, asking how the final tax bill ended up with a certain special provision that experts say would benefit investors of real estate limited liability corporations, that's their LLCs, right? Now, what's interesting is that this provision would help someone like Bob Corker, who happens to have a real estate-related LLC. Hmm. So Bob Corker's sitting here, he's like, oh, I'm going to vote for this bill, uh, but it has this thing in there that would benefit me. I wonder why it's in there, because everybody seems to be really pissed at me for some reason. <laughs> I, I can't understand why. I said I was going to vote for this gigantic wealth redistribution uh, tax cut for the wealthy, um, and it's got this provision that's going to help me out tremendously, and why are people mad that I'm going to vote for it? Mm, weird. Um, now, he explains, the letter follows an International Business Times investigative series showing that Corker, President Trump, and House Speaker Paul Ryan and a handful of key GOP uh, lawmakers overseeing the tax bill have multi-million dollar ownership stakes in such LLCs, meaning they could be personally enriched by the provision, which was added to the final tax legislation released on Friday. So not only would this bill just cut their taxes, right? Because uh, Bob Corker is going to see a tax cut. Paul Ryan's going to see a tax cut. Donald Trump's definitely going to see a tax cut from this bill. And this would also enrich those very people even more with a special provision that they just decided just to throw in there. Especially tailored to benefit them if they have anything to do with real estate. Hmm, interesting. Now, look, uh, I think it's pretty clear their intent. Uh, and in fact, I believe it was John Cornyn that said, hey, man, look, all we're trying to do is just cobble something together that the Republicans will vote for. Oh, you mean like Republicans like Bob Corker? Hmm. <laughs> Who you know, or seem, you seem to know that he would benefit from this. That's why you threw this in. We know their intent. We know they're trying to get Republican votes. And they're like, hey, look, we'll, we'll give you something extra. Just vote for us, man. We got donors to please. Like, we know Bob Corker, he's going to retire. And so he, he's, he doesn't have to serve the donors anymore. He's already served the donors plenty of times, uh, and he is retiring his knee pads from doing so, okay? That's why he's actually been honest about President Trump. Make no mistake, he's still a Republican. And so he's still going to look at, hey, man, self-interest, mm, look at that. I benefit greatly from this provision that's being thrown into this bill, so guess what? I'm going to vote for it. And of course, when he gets called on, and, oh, I, how did that end up in there? Oh, gee, I am so perturbed that this thing ended up in the tax bill that I'm voting for, um, yeah, well, let's do something about it. Let's do something about it. <laughs> this is textbook corruption. Textbook. And sadly, they, of course, they do this all the time. They do this all the time. And according to David Sirota, there's a big reason, right? Now, Corker, uh, this week, could decide the fate of the entire $1.5 trillion. Uh, some analysis now are coming up with $2 trillion tax bill in the Senate. Now, John McCain, he's skipping out. He's like, oh, well, oh man, oh, phew, this cancer. I gotta go do something about it. Sorry, I can't vote. As if the people already don't hate him enough. Uh, at this point, um, he decided, go, okay, well, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be there for the vote. So it's up for, it's up to you guys. And really, it's up to Bob Corker. He's the last person, right? He's the lone guy who can make or break this bill. So it's very, very important to the donors. And if it's if it's important to the donors, it's really, really important to the Republican politicians that the donors have actually purchased. So that's what we have going on here. Now, a lot of people thought maybe Bob Corker might be the guy who shuts down this bill, who, you know, does this, right? He could be the guy that drops the, the thumbs down. 
and they base that on, and you hear a lot of corporate media talking about this. I, I think that this bill is pretty much a foregone conclusion. He, they're going to pass it. They're going to give the gigantic tax cuts to the rich, even though they know it's going to destroy the economy. They don't care. They work for their donors, right? But corporate media is like, ooh, Bob Corker, I don't know. He might have a conscience. Well, they base that on the fact that he did not vote for the last bill. However, the Senate bill did not have that provision. It was actually a provision sort of in the House bill. Uh, but it actually stretches far beyond that, uh, as I'm going to explain. Now, how much would Corker save? And that's the question here, right? So how much is Cor Corker worth? How much is his vote worth? Economist Dean Baker estimated that based on his financial holdings, Corker could be saving as much as $1.1 million from this late addition to the tax bill. And of course, this came out. And everybody was pissed. They called it the Corker kickback. Because that's exactly what this is. Now think about this. We, we live in a system where major pieces of legislation that are deeply unpopular with the American people, by the way, are passed with what to me seem like obvious bribes in order to get people's vote. In order to get them passed. So... And look, it's a disgusting system, and you wonder why people know that Congress isn't serving them, right? People know this. This is the stuff that they do all the time when people are not paying attention. This is considered just a part of legislating, just a part of the process. We give you massive kickbacks, pork and bribes, and then you get our, our vote. Even if you're, you know, not representing your constituents, which is clear because, again... Most Americans do not want this tax bill, but we don't live in a democracy anymore. Uh, and I can argue we pretty much have, never have. But anyway, now under fire for switching his position after a personally lucrative provision was added to the bill, Corker said he demanded to know how the language got into the final bill. He said, quote, because this issue has raised concerns, I would ask that you provide an explanation of the evolution of this provision and how it made it into the final conference report. Um, I think that because many of uh, many sensitivities, clarity on this issue is very important, and I hope that you will respond in an expeditious manner. Basically, this is Corker saying, oh my God, I, I am shocked. I'm shocked to find out that there's gambling in this establishment. I had no idea. I had no idea it was in there. I didn't even read the bill. That's, that's his defense. I didn't read the bill. I didn't even know it was in there. And, but I was going to vote for it anyway. Oh, that's convenient. That's super convenient. <laughs> now, to be fair, Corker uh, is not a member of the Senate Finance Committee. He was not a part of the Senate co conferees who negotiated the bill, but he could have at least read it. But no, that, that's not a good excuse. I didn't read the bill. Yeah, I know. Nobody reads the bill. Your staffers actually read it, and your staffers actually tell you what's in it. And the fact that they added this in when it was Corker that is the deciding vote, I think it's pretty fucking clear who this was aimed at. People know, hey, look, Corker, he's got some interests. And, oh, look, he flipped his vote. You can't tell me that he that had nothing to do with it, that he didn't know. Of course he knew. Of course he knew. Come on. We, we know, right? We know. You can't lie your way out of this one. They wanted to get the votes. They added this provision. And look, also, this would uh, help, again, Donald Trump, help Paul Ryan. So it would help themselves. Now, I want to explain this provision a little bit um, with the help of uh, the International Business Times. Now, what this does specifically is that it will help pass through income generated by LLCs, partnerships, and S corporations that don't pay uh, corporate taxes. Corporate, uh, the owners and investors do pay the individual rates, and the business itself doesn't pay through, uh, doesn't pay any taxes. The taxation basically passes through the business and gets absorbed by the owners. That, of course, helps the business out because that's a lower tax rate, especially now with this bill. That's going to give them a much lower tax rate. Now, that can be beneficial to a smaller company, but also this can be beneficial to bigger companies, which are also set up as pass-through corporations. 
So, or pass through entities. And look, the House version of the bill included a tax cut for uh, such entities. Now, this would impose a 25% cap on the taxation of pass through income. The Senate bill that Corker voted against, however, uh, used a 23% deduction to reduce levies on pass through businesses. The Senate bill also included language designed to prevent the tax cut from being utilized through pass through uh, entities which do not pay wages a provision which congressional Republicans say helps ensure this particular form of tax relief goes to so-called job creators. Now, in the conference committee that drafted the reconciled bill, negotiators created a provision that was not in the House or Senate bills. They adopted the Senate framework of the bill, including its restrictions, but crafted special new language to allow partnerships with depreciable assets that pay literal or no wages to take advantage of the bill's 20% 20% deduction on pass-through income. Now, it is unclear who actually added that, right? So we don't know. So here's the scam, right? So this would apply to partnerships with assets that pay little or no wages, and they get a reduction of 20%. So, and, and, and the language says that you don't actually have to create any jobs. You can create no jobs, and guess what? You get to take advantage of this gigantic pass-through rate as long as you have depreciable assets. So if you have anything that's considered a depreciable asset, that's it. You're getting a tax cut. You don't have to create jobs. Fuck that. Because that's not what this bill is about. This provision, this tax cut bill as a whole, is an enormous transfer of wealth from the poor and the middle class to the rich. You know why I say that, right? When wealthy people don't pay their taxes, guess who makes it up? You do. Because they're never going to make this significant cut. You think they're going to cut the military? No, no, no. They're going to put more money into the military. And instead of having rich people and corporations pay their fair share, now you're paying more out of your paycheck. For us to go, for those same corporations, by the way, that sell weapons to the U.S. military, the defense contractors, uh, as well as the corporations that will take advantage of, for example, uh, wars for oil, resources. That's the system we live in, man. They're going to get a tax cut for all that, and you're going to end up holding the bag. You're always going to end up paying the bill. So, And they're not hiding this anymore. They're not hiding the fact that it's a massive transfer of wealth. But Corker says, no, I didn't know this was in there for me. No, 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 I'm just going to have to think about it. I mean, I was started the house bill. And this in no way has actually changed my vote whatsoever. I mean, golly gee, I had no idea. I had no idea. We're not buying it. We're not buying it, dude. Not buying it. He expects us to believe that this is just a coincidence. Just a coincidence. Look, if Corker votes for this, despite all this outrage, and I expect him to, he's saying that, yes, I don't have any morals. My vote can be bought because I am still just as corrupt as any of the other guys. I may be leaving Congress, but I'm still a Republican, and I'm still going to get paid. That's what this is about, uh, and that's what this tax bill, all this is. So, he's, odds are he's going to vote for this. This provision is still going to be there, um, and nobody is going to do anything about it because, again, this is them trying to buy votes, and they will be very successful because they are corrupt politicians. Got to throw the bums out. <laughs> In this case, this bum particularly is leaving, but the rest of them got to go. We cannot abide by this corruption. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.